In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural tree bark material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support this channel as well as get the project files for this tutorial, then you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links will be in the description. Also, before we get started, I wanted to thank Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is an awesome 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so here's the procedural material that we're going to be creating. And you can see that we're even going to be adding some moss there on the bark. Now I'm going to be adding this on a cylinder because I want it to look like a tree trunk, but you could also just add it onto a regular sphere if you wanted to, whatever you'd like to do. Now I wanted to show you the setup that I have before we get started. So I'm using the cycles render engine and because I'm using the cycles render engine, I added these plane lights. So I just added these two objects right here and then I added an emission material onto them and that way they'll just light up the procedural material. Now also with the lighting, I added in an HDRI from HDRI Haven. So I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I added. So in the world settings, I just added an environment texture right here and then I opened opened up the HDRI that I downloaded. Then I also added a camera and just pointed it into the very center of the scene. Now for the object, what I did is I pressed Shift A and I went right down here and added a cylinder. So then what I did is I tabbed into edit mode and I just went to the face select and selected the top face. Then I pressed Control B and that's going to add a bevel. And then you can scroll with your mouse wheel and just make the amount of vertices, just make it kind of smooth and then just click to place that. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom. So I'm just going to click on this, press control B and then click to place that. Now back in object mode, I'm just going to press control two. And that is the shortcut key for adding a subsurf modifier. So it, it now has a lot more detail and it's very smooth. And then I will just apply this modifier and then I can just also shade the object smooth. So now I'm going to hop over to the shading tab and then we can make the procedural material. Now, one more really quick thing before we start, I'm going to be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can go right over here to edit and then click on the preferences. And then in the user preferences, just click on the add-ons right here. And then you're going to click on the search and you're going to search for node and then just check mark the node wrangler add-on. And then we can use it when we're setting up our procedural material. And then I'll just close the preferences. All right. So now we can finally set up this material. So I'm just going to go into rendered modes so that we can preview the material right here. So I'm going to click on new and then I can just call this procedural bark. All right. And then if I zoom out here, if I can find it, here we go. So it added in a principled BSDF shader on default, and that is great. So I'm first going to start by pressing shift A and I'm going to add a wave texture. So I'm adding in this wave texture because we want to make those grooves kind of in the bark. It kind of goes up and down, but then it's kind of wiggly. So I'm going to add the wave texture and then using the feature from the node wrangler, I can hold down the control and shift key and click on the node and then that will preview it. And then also using another feature from the node wrangler, I'm going to press control T with this node selected and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping node. And then I just want to set the object into the mapping and that way it'll place the texture around the object more evenly. And the object mapping also works really well when you're placing this material on other objects. All right, now let's change the scale. I'm going to change this to maybe like a three because I don't want quite that many lines. And then I'm going to turn the distortion up to maybe somewhere around a seven. So it's a little bit distorted. And then I do want there to be quite a bit of detail because bark is pretty rough. So I'm going to turn the detail up to like eight. And you can see that if I zoom in here, there's all that little bit of detail and that's really great. And then the detail scale, I think I'll turn this up to like a 3.5. And now you can see we're really starting to get some nice detail in that bark. All right, now I want to put this into the normal so that it can make the bark bumpy. So the color, I'm gonna put that into the normal, but then what we need to do is we need to convert this to normal data because you can see this yellow one right here, this is a color, but then this is a purple one. So we need to convert it. So to convert it, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a bump node. I'm just gonna drop the bump node right here. And then what we wanna do actually is we want the factor to go into the height 
and then that'll go through the bump node and then it will go into the normal. So now if I control shift and click on this, you can see, there we go. We're already getting some nice bump there. And then if you want to change the strength, you can, you could turn it down if you want. I just want to leave it up at one. So it's very bumpy. All right. And then I also want this wave texture to be contributing to the color because right now it's white. We could just turn this to like a brown color if we wanted, like a bark color, but I want the wave texture to actually contribute to that. So the color, I'm just going to plug that up to the base color. Now that does not look very good. That doesn't look like bark. And so what we need to do is change the colors in between. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node. I'll just drop the color ramp node right here. And then we can just take this white value and the dark value and just play around with it to get the colors that we want. So this black tab, I'm just going to click on it and then I'm going to change it to a dark brown. I don't want it to be super saturated, just kind of like a dark brown. I don't want to bring it way to the end of the color wheel because then it will be too saturated, just kind of a light brown, something like that. Although I do want it to be darker, so I will bring the darkness down quite a bit. All right, that is good. And then this one, I want to be a brown color as well, but this one is going to be a lighter brown. So it's still going to be somewhat dark, but it'll be a little bit lighter, maybe something like that. I want to make this one a little bit less saturated though, because it seems like a lot of bark actually looks pretty gray. So I'll make it a little less saturated. Something like that looks pretty good. So you can see, there we go. That's already looking a lot like bark. Now there's a few more things that I want to do. Um, I want to add in moss. So let's go ahead and do that. So to add any moss, I'm going to press shift a, and I'm going to search for a noise texture. We'll just drop the noise texture right here above the wave texture. And then I also want the mapping and texture coordinate to be plugging into it. So let's take the vector and plug that into the vector of the noise texture. And then I can control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. Now I want to turn the scale up quite a bit. So I'm going to turn it up to like a 15. So that there's a lot more of that noise. And then the detail, I'll turn that all the way up to 16 so that the noise texture is very detailed. And then the roughness, I think I'll turn this up to like a 0.62. So you can see adding just a little bit more roughness adds even more detail. So I like how that looks. All right, now this noise texture is mainly going to be used to add the moss, but I think it will add more detail and make it look better if it's also going into the color a little bit as well. So I'm just going to mix these two together just so that this wave texture has a little bit of the noise because you can see with how it is now, these white parts don't really have much detail. So I'm going to mix this noise in with the wave texture. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB. We'll just drop that there. And then I will just take the factor and plug that into color one. And then the wave texture, that's going to be going into color two. And then because I want to mix them both together, I don't want to set it to mix because mix is just going to use one or the other. And you can see if I change the factor, it's just going to switch between them. I want to change this to multiply. So you can see now if I turn the factor all the way to zero, it's just the noise texture. But then if I turn the factor up, it's adding the wave texture in with it. So now you can see if you just control shift and click on the color ramp, or just click right here, you can see that it's basically adding those on together. So now we have the noise as well as the wave texture, and that gives even more detail. But then I also want to add the moss on top. So let's go ahead and do that. So the noise texture, I can just control shift and click on it. We want to make a mask and then use that mask to tell it where the moss is going to be and where it's not going to be. So to make the mask, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a, another color ramp. We'll just drop the color ramp right here. So the factor is going to be going into the color ramp and then I'll just control shift and click on the color ramp. So we need to make it very clear where the moss is going to be and where the moss isn't going to be. So this black value, I'm going to drag this way out and then the white value I will drag up as well. So they're very close to each other and you can see this is very contrasty. And so where it's white, that's where the moss is going to be and where it's black, there's not going to be any moss. So if you want there to be lots of moss, you could kind of bring them over here. But if you want there to be just a little bit of moss, you could bring them both over here. So wherever the white parts are, that's where the moss is going to be. All right, so that looks good. Uh, we can play around with that later if we'd like to. So now we just need to add this in and then we'll plug it into the base color. So what I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to search for a another mix RGB and we'll just drop it down here. So color one is going to be the bark color and then color two is going to be the moss color. So for the moss, I'm just going to make it kind of like a green, kind of like a dark green, maybe slightly more on the yellow side, just make whatever color you like for moss. So I can control shift and click on this, but now it just adds a green tint. And so we want to use this color ramp here as the factor to tell it 
where the MOS is going to be and where it's not going to be. So we'll just plug the color of the color ramp right into the factor. And then if I control shift and click on the mix, you can see that there we go. There's just little bits of moss. And then if you want a little bit more moss, I think I will have a little bit more moss. I can just kind of drag that around. And there we go. Looking very good. All right. So let's just control shift and click on this to preview that. And then let's just zoom into the moss. So the moss looks pretty good, but it's not bumping out at all. So I want to also take this color ramp and use it in the bump. So the bump here, I'm just going to select this and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and just drop it down here. And then the normal is just going to go through the normal. So now you can see we have this extra height one right here and we can add this in and then we can add both of the bumps together and then that'll go into the principle. So what we're going to do is just take the color ramp right here, take the color and plug that into the height. And now if I control shift and click on this, you can see there is the moss. So if you just click on the bump and then press M, that will mute the node and you can see the moss isn't there. And then if I press M to unmute it, there we go. There's these little bits of moss and it's even more detailed. And then if you want to change the strength, if you don't want the moss to be very bumpy, you can turn that down. So I can control shift and click on this now and you can see, there we go. The moss has little bits of bump. And if I press M to mute that, you can see that doesn't really look good. It just looks like it's in the bark. But then if I press M, there we go. It looks like it pops out a little bit. And then also what we can do to just give it a little bit more detail is we can take the noise texture, this factor, and we can plug it into the roughness. And then that's going to tell it where it's going to be more rough and where it's going to be more shiny. And then if you want more control over this, where it's going to be more rough and where it's going to be more shiny, you can press shift A and again, search for another color ramp and I'm just going to drop it down here. Now bark is pretty rough, so I don't want it to be that rough. So this black value, I'm actually going to turn it way up and you can see that right here, right over here where it's kind of shiny, you can see it's very rough because I turn this up to white, but if I turn it down to black, you can see it's much more shiny. So bark is a little bit shiny. Everything does have a little bit of reflection, but bark is pretty rough. So you can just change this to whatever you want. You could also take this white value and turn it down if you want everything to be more shiny. I'm just going to keep this up and then I'll just make this one kind of a gray color. All right. And then just control shift and click on the principal BSDF to preview the final material. So I'm just going to render this out and we'll take a look. All right, here we go. So here is the procedural bark material. You can see it has a lot of detail in there and it's got those little mossy bits. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support this channel, I am trying to make Blender content for a living. So if you'd like to help support me, you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and you can get 3D models and assets. You can get artwork project files, procedural materials, and my other tutorial files on my Gumroad and Patreon. On. And if you'd like to help support me monthly here on YouTube, I have the YouTube memberships. So you can see that there's that join button right next to the subscribe button. So if you join my memberships, you'll be supporting me each month and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. I also have some procedural material packs up for sale. So I have the first procedural material pack already up for sale. I'll leave the link in the description and I'm getting the second pack of procedural materials ready as well. So when that's released, I will leave the link in the description. Or if you'd like to create all of these procedural materials yourself, I have a playlist in the description to all of my procedural material tutorials and you can learn how to create all of them. But with that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a future video.